It's late June, and that means the Tour de France is right around the corner. So brace yourself for all of my dodgy French pronunciations as I share everything that you need to know about the 2024 Tour de France. The 111th edition of the race begins in Florence, Italy, on the 29th of June and finishes just over three weeks later in Nice on the 21st of July. Now, the first thing to note is that yes, for the third year in a row, the Tour won't be starting in France itself, but in Italy for the very first time. The other thing, before we get any further, is that it will not finish in Paris due to the Olympics, so instead it'll be finishing in Nice. It might not be as obviously hilly as last year's edition, but this is going to be a very tough Tour de France, with general classification day spread throughout the race from the very start to the very end. The Tour will cover a total of 3,497 kilometers, with 52,320 meters of overall elevation, which is no small feat. In fact, it's quite a lot of feat. It's 20% more than the Giro, and that is saying something. Stage one is a hilly affair, which will create time gaps from the very beginning. And with the race not finishing in Paris, the organizers have done away with the usual processional final day, instead putting in a hilly time trial from Monaco to Nice. In between, there are four mountaintop finishes, another time trial, and a gravel stage, which should provide more than enough questions for those aiming for the top spot come the end. This year's Tour de France will visit Cesenatico in Italy at the very start of stage two to pay tribute to one of its former heroes, Marco Pantani. As well as being the last Italian to win the race, he was also the last rider to complete the Giro Tour double. 26 years later, the double appears to be very much on the cards, with Tade Pogaccia of UAE Team Emirates comprehensively dominating the Giro last month, winning by almost 10 minutes over the next place rider, and is in pole position to return to the yellow jersey, which he last won in 2021. The Slovenian has had his challenge made slightly easier by his great rival, Jonas Vingegaard, after he suffered serious injuries back in April, and so is firmly the favourite. While many have thought that a double is no longer achievable due to the rigours of both races, Pogaccia looks so in control at the Giro that this is now a very real possibility. British eyes will undoubtedly be on Mark Cavendish of Astana Kazakhstan, who will be back for one final, final attempt at cracking that stage win record, which he currently holds jointly with Eddie Merckx. The pair of quite different greats of the sport have 34 tour stage wins apiece, with Cav having about seven more opportunities for that final stage win. The Manx missile has not been completely off form this year, achieving stage wins at both the Tour of Colombia and Tour of Hungary, but he has also not been racking up victories quite like he used to. The 38-year-old is very good at delivering when he absolutely has to, like on the last stage of the 2023 Giro d'Italia. And it does feel rude to bet against the legend of the sport. He was also within touching distance of a win last year, so you can hardly write him off. That said, however, he will have his work cut out against the likes of Jasper Philipsen of Alpsen de Kooning. A serious crash at Itzulia Basque Country back in April had repercussions not just for that race, but for the entire season going forward. Three favourites for the Tour de France, Visma Lisa Bikes' Jonas Vingegaard, Sudal Quicksteps' Remco Evnopol, and Bora Hansgrohe's Primoz Roglic were all caught up in it, with injuries ranging from the minor to the very severe. Vingegaard, the winner of the Tour for the past two seasons, came off worst, breaking several ribs, his collarbone, and puncturing his lung in the incident. It remains to be seen what state the Dane will be in, in Florence. Visma would surely not start Vingegaard unless he was in the position to challenge for the victory, and yet that seems like a very tall order at this point. He has been training at altitude and is back on the bike, but it is far from the ideal preparation for the defence of his title. Question marks remain, especially as the Tour will be his first race since April. The two other GC contenders caught up in that Itzulia crash, Roglic and Evnopol, came off less badly with the former just battered and bruised and the latter breaking his collarbone. 
The pair returned to racing at the Criterium de Dauphiné this month, with both winning stages and spending time in the overall lead. Evnepol won the time trial, boding well for the Tour's two races against the clock, but consistently lost time in the high mountains, ending up overall seventh. Meanwhile, Roglic won back-to-back -back mountain stages as well as the overall GC, but he did appear to crack on the final stage, ceding time to Ineos Grenadiers' Carlos Rodriguez and Matteo Jorgensen of Visma Lisa Bike. Alperson de Koenig's Jasper Philipsen returns to the race where he won four stages and the points classification last year, and is clearly eager for more. The Belgian has had a carefully curated program tailored exactly towards the Tour, with just the Belgium Tour as a warm-up between Paru Bay where he finished second. Alperson de Koenig have the luxury of using Mathieu van der Poel, the best classics rider of a generation, as an elite lead-out man, making it hard to look past the team for the sprints. Van der Poel will be given his own opportunities too. Having not raced since Liège Baston Liège, the world champion should be fresh come Florence, and you can imagine a successful tour for both of them. Other sprinters to watch out for will include the likes of Mads Pedersen of Lidl Trek, who will challenge on those punchy days too, and of course Arnold de Lee of Lotto Destiny. Every day is a key stage at a race as demanding as the Tour de France, but this is especially true at this year's edition, which just does not let up. Stage 1 includes 3,800 metres of elevation over 205 kilometres, the most ever in an opening stage, so it will be one for the punchers and the climbers. The next big day for the GC riders will come on stage 4, with ascents of the Sestrier and Col du Galibier before a downhill finish. Stage 7 is the first time trial, a technical 25 kilometers with a decent amount of climbing, but the real test is on stage 9 with its 14 sectors of gravel in the Champagne country. The next big tests come towards the end of the second week, with mountaintop finishes on both stage 14 and 15, before the race returns to the Alps in the final days. Stage 19 will see the peloton climb the Col de la Bonnet, the highest road in France at 2,802 metres. That's followed by stage 20 to the Col de la Coyule, the last summit finish, before a final hilly day time trial. Now that time trial, the 34 kilometres, will be mighty tense, especially if there are small gaps on the general classification. As ever, the Tour de France is the stage for some new bikes to break cover. Now, most of these have already been teased at the Criterium de Dauphiné due to them needing to be tested and registered before the big day itself, but we will be seeing a lot more of them at the big race in July. Trek hardly hid their new Madone, with Mads Pedersen riding it to the stage victory at the Dauphiné, but the bike is essentially a diet version of the current Madone, with combined features from both climbing bikes and aero offerings. Canyon have been teasing an Aero CFR for a few weeks now, and this will likely gain a full launch at the Tour. It's evolution rather than revolution, but it's still interesting. Another brand readying a new bike is Pinarello, who are set to bring out a new Dogma, further optimising aerodynamics on the model, which is already their flagship climbing bike too. Villiers also teased a new bike recently, so it's all going on. It is hard to predict anything for this tour, given the amount of unknowables that are still out there. We do not know what Jonas Vinegard's form will be like, or if it will be anything like the world beater we have come to know. Likewise, it is impossible to guess how Tadej Pogacar will have recovered from his Giro d'Italia exploits. However, I feel it is highly likely that Pogacar will be on the top step in Nice. Such was his power and superiority at the Giro. I think he'll be accompanied by his compatriot, Primoz Roglic, who has the tenacity and staying power to remain in contention over three weeks. The other podium spot is more up in the air. Due to his form in stage races in the last couple of months, let's say Carlos Rodriguez. The Spaniard does not have the experience of others, but he is an excellent climber. Obviously, this is a world in which Remco Evenepoel and Jonas Vingegaard aren't quite at it yet. but. I can just feel it, and I am prepared to have egg on my face.